Hello and welcome to this Project in a Box video tour. In this tour we're going to be having a look at risk and issue management on small team and enterprise editions. So this is the uh, Windows application, the software for uh, small team and enterprise edition, the client. And uh, here we are in uh, our selected project. And the, uh, the risks and issues for the project will be held um, and updated via files within the project. Normally these are set up from the method templates, so they are standard templates with um, perhaps templated example content in, with the settings all preset from the template so you can standardize the way these are collected across the organization. And they can be Excel templates, but by far more common is to have um, Planner, which is our own free planning tool. It supports plans, tasks, uh, risks and issues, and uh, you can use that tool, uh, it's completely free, you can give it to whoever you want to. There's a completely separate video tour on use of planner, we will refer to it a bit in this one as well. So normally a planner template, um, and in this case we've got one of those here, it's this SPN type of file. Uh, and in our smaller projects we tend to run a template which collects tasks, risks and issues uh, all in one file, makes it much simpler to update. And so as the user checks the file out, makes changes to it, checks it back in again, that content is immediately reflected into what we call the project controls database within the application. Um, so it reads effectively all the content from that uh, file into the central database and, um, and mixes it with the risks and issues from all the other um, projects held in the system. So a central database is compiled of all latest risks and issue information and it's updated every time a file that contributes to that is checked back in. Um, now say so that's set up from the method template and actually you can change that if you want to. You can add extra files so you can have multiple sources of risks and issues across the project um, with perhaps different settings uh, in them if you want to do that. So uh, you've got control over all that. As per usual we try and standardise that from out of the box and then you can personalize that if you want to. So we've then got our database so we can ignore to some extent the file uh, now um, and look at what we've actually got in the database and we can access that via the controls menu up here or often we've built into our navigation diagram not only the processes we want people to use but also the tools we'd like them to use. So this is a nicely saved shortcut which takes me to the project controls display of all the risks for the current project which is the office move. So this will be showing me every risk that's in any re referred to register for risks for this project. And so I can see that information here. I've got a screen split into in practice three parts. At the top we have um, a table display, statistical table display. We then have a list of the risks, and then in the bottom part here we have a list of the issues, uh, sorry, a list of the responses. Uh, and if there, was, if there are any responses for that particular uh, risk, they will display here. So, um, pretty straightforward sort of format, um, and it's going, as I say, everything for this particular project. Uh, in the normal sort of way, we can order these lists, etc. We can click on uh, a task. Uh, sorry, a risk to see the risk information uh, that we're holding for it and about its particular responses if there are any um, etc. And this is exactly as it will have been loaded from the last register. Of course if we want to make any changes to that we go back to the register, check it out, make some changes, check it back in again. And what that means is that you're separating the updating of the data from looking at the data and that means you can have restricted access to who's able to update the data if you want to, using the permissions control on the files. Um, and then people see the data here depending on their permissions to see the data. So every user can see risks that relate to them. So I'm looking here at the entire risks for the project. But actually, I can change the data range that's in use here from project risks to my project risks. And this will then show all the risks on this project that I'm involved in. Either I'm the owner of the risk, as is the case with these ones, 
but in these ones here I'm not the owner of the risk, I must be involved in some way with one of the responses on that risk, as indeed I am. So um, it's going to show me data that's appropriate for me. Exactly the same thing happens with plans um, and the same thing happens with issues as well. You can look at the things that are just relevant to you. And anybody who has permissions to work on this project will be able to get this view of the data. They'll be able to see risks and issues and tasks which are related to them from the database, even if they don't have access to the source file from which that data came. So this is keeping your team members in touch with the things that are relevant to themselves. They can see what's going on with these risks, what the status of them are, what remediation actions perhaps are in place, um, what the latest commentary on, the status of all that information is, etc. So this is an important thing, this data range element here. And of course, it doesn't just have to narrow to my view. If I'm an administrator, I can go and look at it for other view users if I want to. And in fact, I can also expand that view. So I can look, because I'm a higher permission user, I can look across the whole portfolio. I might be the department manager here. So I want to see all the risks on all the projects that are within the marketing department. So I could go away and see all those. I can perhaps then start to get some feel for that. We've got some obviously some here that are used, some projects that are using some different sort of statuses. We've got some extra categories that have been um, included here as well as we broaden that out. But I might be interested in doing some sort of standard analysis. Um, and we can use the view element to do that. So uh, if we go to default view here, this lays out the standard display arrangements for risks that we're interested in. If I want to pick a different view, I could pick, for example, uh, all risks or the top 10 risks ordered by residual expected value. So that's going to go through the risks in the current data range, which is portfolio risks, identify the top 10 by residual expected value and present me those, which is what it's done here. So it's nice and easy for the department manager to go and see what's the highest potential impact risk we have. I could go and look at, uh, if I wanted to, all risks with a probability of greater than 50%. And we have these views set up here to be able to jump very quickly to the standard bits of analysis we want to be able to do. Um, and we can see what these views do for us. If we look here within Edit View, we'll see that this controls the things that are switched on and off, whether we're looking at responses at all, and if so, are we going to show all of them, um, what we're sorting by, which particular bits of analysis in terms of charts do we want to show? And we're going to look at these in a bit more detail in a moment. And what filter rules are we applying? So this one was a relatively simple one, show prop, uh, probability values greater than 50%. But in fact, we can set these filters up to be um, pretty much anything we want to based on the sort of data that we're collecting or holding for our risks. We can search for things within comments, uh, within tags, within owner information, status information, all the other sort of values that we're collecting, and we can do compound mixes of these filter rules to be able to look for, uh, for example, probability greater than 50%, owned uh, by me, uh, where the uh, category is technical. You know, so we could put together a filter like that. We could decide what sort of data we wanted to display, which columns are we interested in displaying, which order are they going to be in, what do we want to display for our responses, etc. When we've got all that exactly how we want it, what we can do is we can save this view for use again. Um, depending on the sort of permissions we have, every user that can see this, so every manager or team licensed user can save it for their own personal use again. If you're modify user on the project, you can save it for the project team to use again. So it'll become available in the pick lists when you're working from this project. And if you're an administrator, you can save this as a global view. You can make it available for everybody to use, so you can build in some additional standardized analyses. And in fact, you can also, of course, edit the ones that are there and change those as well. So it's about standardizing these bits of analysis. And as we see later, you can once you've created these sorts of um, additional views, you can use, reuse them immediately in the browser application, so from people's smartphones and tablets, just at one pick from a list. And they can also be used to drive the content that's included in reporting. Um, and that's also means you can standardize both what you see in your analysis here, but then also what you, of course, get out into your reports. 
So this um, this idea of data range and view is uh, is very popular um, and really helps you get to grips very quickly with large amounts of or larger amounts of data. Um, the other thing to talk about here is the bits of analysis that we can get. So we've got our traditional table and list sort of views here. If we come to charts, we'll see that we can also get our sort of chart by category. And you'll notice that it does this for whatever's currently set up in the view. So um, we've just got our key seven risks here, and that's the same for risk rating spread and for the averaged values, etc., uh, and for our inherent and residual risk matrix. If we come back and switch this back to default and go and get our charts again, obviously it's using the full default set. And all these charts are available to right click and uh, save to file or copy to clipboard to use in another application. So you can get these bits of analysis out very, very quickly. Same with the data you're looking at. Whatever is in the current view, you can use export here to go and get that data, copy to clipboard, or um, or produce a uh, an export CSV file with that data in it. So uh, once you've got your data range and your view set up, that data can be used in a wide range of different applications. You can go and do your own custom analysis on it. You can set up that data so the column arrangements are right to load it into a different application if you want to. You know, really very powerful. Same sort of thing for print here. You can go and get um, print preview, nicely laid out PDF arrangements of the data with the charts that you've got selected and all that sort of stuff. So that's for risks. Um, exactly the same sort of arrangement for issues and also actually for plans and resources, which we'll talk about in a different tour. But these uh, controls forms are laid out with that consistency in mind, so it's very easy, once you've learned how to use one of them, to pick up and use the next one. We've got exactly the same data range options here. We've got exactly the same view type arrangements. Obviously, the views that are available for us to pick are different because it's different sorts of data, but exactly the same idea, exactly the same sort of thing, with our charts as well showing our distribution of data that we might find useful in reports, etc. So um, there's really a split here between the way the data is entered, which is a say from file, it could be Excel or Planner, and then what we do with that, how we um, integrate data from many different projects into the portfolio or allow the user to see all the risks they're involved in across the entire um, uh, the entire server, etc. Um, so let's have a, a quick look at some of the things that spin off from that. We're going to talk about the browser, but we're also going to talk about the properties that are automatically derived from the database, um, the Project Controls database. So when I come here and look at Project, I can see my properties for the portfolio and for the particular projects. And here on Office Move, you can see it's showing me the issues by type, the data about which issues I've got, how many uh, open risks there are, how many open issues there are, a commentary view on off specs, problems and requests for change on this project, derived automatically from the latest data in the database. And that can be shown here as a property. It can be automatically reinserted into another file if we want using the document property elements, um, as well as shown here, as well as used in reports. So it's really useful to be able to get that sort of data back out again. We can also get that immediately from our browser interface as well. So if I come over here, again, I'm on, a, I'm on obviously the desktop using that here, but I could be doing exactly the same thing to this pure browser interface from um, a tablet, from my smartphone, etc. If I just log in, and go and select my project, So we want our marketing department portfolio again. And we want our Office Move project, the one we were just looking at a second ago. And as that updates here, we'll see that same information we saw earlier displaying for us here. Here we can also see risks by category. In the, um, in the main application view, we get to choose the uh, properties we want to see. Here it's going to show us uh, all of the ones that it has calculated. 
Um, so if I want to um, come and see again task risk issues here I can come to the risk tab you'll see it's defaulted to all my risks and as a data range and uh, a global default uh, display and whatever's saved in that view in terms of which charts and elements are switched on and off that's what we'll see in fact they're all switched on here so I get a um, big bit of analysis all the data tables um, all the uh, data obviously some of these have got very big commentaries in just to demonstrate that's possible um, others are more typically sized and we've got our response list at the bottom awful lot of data probably a bit too much for me there I might be interested in going off and looking at the project risks and perhaps my uh, risks ordered by residual expected value and then I get that up again in exactly the same sort of way and we can switch on and off the various bits of display that we might be interested in and refresh that so here we were using the standard saved views and hence the ability for administrators to create a custom view with the things that they think people want the type of analysis they think people want using filtered rules and the types of things they want switching on and off um, and that's preset so you can then use those from here and of course you can switch on and off the items if you want to to manage your real estate on the screen but you've got that data up and immediately available exactly the same thing applies with issues and here's my all my issues global list and that's the default you get so when you're on your tablet and you come to here you can immediately see what issues you uh, you have to deal with okay so obviously the data that comes into here is largely coming from planner certainly in this particular example it's coming from planner um, we're going to uh, not talk about planner in detail here but I would strongly recommend that you have a good look at the planner uh, video tours there's a whole load of them um, but there's a couple in particular that focus on managing risks and issues and how you can personalize the setup of risk and issues within your planner templates so that's the end of our risk and issues tour I hope you found that helpful um, like I say I would strongly uh, suggest you have a look at the planner tours um, and also have a look at the tour on reporting where we show how we can get that data from the view out into our produced management reports as well okay thank you